I'm going to talk today about the evidence emerging from a new data product produced by the U.S. Census Bureau called the Business Formation Statistics. It's a new data product that was developed in collaboration with academics like myself and a team at the Board of Governors. Uh, it's providing uh, rich new information about entrepreneurship in the United States that's been particularly valuable in the uh, pandemic crisis. So why are we so interested in what's happening with business formation? Is there's lots of evidence that shows that new employer businesses are disproportionately important in terms of contributing to job creation, innovation, and productivity growth. And we also know that employer business startups particularly are, uh, have, have at least historically been highly procyclical. So in the Great Recession, there was a sharp and persistent decline in employer startups. And there's lots of evidence that the slow recovery is, is, is in part attributed to that uh, a slow recovery of startups. We're gonna see in this new evidence in the pandemic, after an early decline, there's been a surprising surge in new business applications. And today I'm gonna to explore the basic facts about the surprising surge, discuss why this has happened and the implications for the recovery from the pandemic. So here I'm showing you some of the basic statistics from this new data product. And let me describe the nature of this uh, new data product. It comes from administrative data from applications for new employer identification numbers. It comes in at a very high frequency to the Census Bureau, comes in on a weekly flow basis. They've actually been getting it for years, but it was only a few years ago that we, the team that I talked about earlier, figured out, wait a second, we could use this not only to help the Census Bureau replenish its business register, but actually as a data product itself. The BFS now has two, two primary series. It has a monthly series, which is very timely. It's released within two weeks, uh, of the end of, a, of the reference month. And so for this, this chart shows you data through May 2021. And there's also weekly data that I'll refer to later that's released on the Thursday after the prior reference week. So, so why is this data informative? Well, it turns out, uh, particularly for employer businesses, it's not surprising it's informative because you have to have an employer identification number to be a new uh, employer uh, uh, business. But it turns out there's, a, there's lots of information on the form that allows you to kind of characterize what the nature of this new business is intended to be. So you can see one thing I want you to see in the chart is if you look at the black line, that's the overall business application. It's called BA, BA for app business applications. You can decompose that into two parts, uh, HBA, which are likely employer businesses. And where's that information coming from? Basically from check boxes that the uh, applier says, well, we're, we're planning on hiring workers. For the NHBA, it turns out to just be the residual. We'll see in just a second that the HBA actually tracks actual business startups in terms of employers quite well, and the NHBA tracks non-employers quite well. But before going to that evidence, you can, you can immediately see the surge that uh, I've, I've spoken about. So you can see early in the pandemic, ar around April and May of 2020, there was a decline in business applications of all types. And then there was an enormous surge, just unprecedented surge, particularly in the summer of 2020. And then you see it actually kind of tapered off a bit and then there seems to be a second wave. And so actually the second month, highest month on record is May, 2021. This data goes back to mid um, 2004. So for this information to be informative, we'd, we'd like it to be connected to actual business startups. And, and, the, and the good news is, is that it is. Actually part of the business formation statistics is linking the micro data on the applications to the actual business startups. And so in the left-hand panel, I'm showing you this HBA series again, and then I'm showing you actual business startups um, as well. And they are the ones that are directly linked to the business applications. Now those actual business startups, actually the series only goes through 2018. After that, because there's such a tight relationship, the business formation statistics includes projections, which you know, may or may not hold, but, but based upon the historical record, uh, we're, we're reasonably confident. The main point I want to make out of this chart is that historically, there's been a very tight relationship between um, the likely new employers and actual business uh, startups. On the right-hand panel, uh, I also show that there's a, a close relationship between the application for likely new non-employers and movements in, in non-employers itself. And so as moving forward, we're going to stipulate that there's been a tight uh, empirical relationship in the past between these and so that these series are informative about the business formation process. 
Now, the biggest surprise is just how dramatic the increases are in, in a period of contraction. And to make that point, here I'm comparing what happened in the Great Recession versus what's happened in COVID-19. And it's a simple little event study that I'm characterizing here. So in the left-hand panel, I pick, picked a, a week zero, and, and it turns out I picked uh, the week ending uh, September 13, 2008. That's when Lehman Brothers collapsed. And then, and then cumulated applications for both likely new employers and non-employers forward. But then also did that for a base period back in 2006, and then took the difference between the two. And so the black line tells us that difference. And you can see that applications for likely new employers declined relative to the base period in the Great Recession, and I think considerably. There's actually a slight increase in applications for likely new uh, non-employers in the, in the Great Recession. But, it, but as we're going to see on the right, it's quite modest relative to what, we see, what we've seen in the COVID-19. So in COVID-19, we did the same kind of exercise, but week zero here was the week ending March 7, 2020. And, and again, did the same exercise, cumulated forwards and backwards, and then compared this to a, took the difference with a base period. In this case, the base period was back in 2018. And you can see this enormous surge that, that's actually proceeded all the way through June 2021. So this is using that weekly data that I talked about that's available um, now through the end of June. And, and, and the numbers are large. So just, just in terms of uh, new, em new employer businesses, we're about 500,000 uh, businesses ahead of the pace we were over a similar period in the base period. We're about 1.5 million ahead in terms of a, a similar period uh, for likely new employers. Now, it's not just that the applications have surged, but they've surged in particular sectors. And so here on the left, I'm showing you the patterns for likely employers and the right for likely non-employers. And the sectors where they surged are places like retail, uh, food and accommodation, professional scientific and technical, health, trucking, warehousing, finance, and construction. Now, many of these are sectors where we've seen dramatic restructuring, changes in the way that businesses uh, do work with their workers and with, with consumers. And so as we're, as we're gonna see, uh, there's gonna be increased evidence that this is part of the reallocation and restructuring that, that's apparently going on or has been going on in the pandemic and in the recovery. This is gonna be especially seen when you look at more detailed industries. So in a special release last October, the Census Bureau in its weekly data for 2019 and 20 released three digit industries. That's much more detailed than the broader sector data that I was just showing you. And this big surge in applications in retail, it's not for all retail, indeed bricks and mortar retail, there hasn't been much of a surge, but there's been an enormous surge in online retailers, what's called non-store retailers in terms of the NAICS codes. So actually the, the, that sector alone, that one, one three digit sector alone accounts for about 33% of the surge. And, and, and the concentration is evident here too, because there are over 300 three digit industries and about 10 of them account for about 75% of the surge. So, so the question, of course, is why this is happening. What's, and, and, and in turn, a related question is what's different from the Great Recession? A key piece, I think, is that financial market conditions are dramatically different. Financial markets collapsed in the, in the Great Recession with an especially large adverse impact on startups and young businesses. And, and this is because housing prices declined and the availability of credit uh, particularly from banks, uh, dried up considerably in, in, in the Great Recession and was slow to recovery. In contrast, financial markets have remained quite robust in, in COVID-19. There's also some, might, we might say, mixed evidence in terms of what the impact of the stimulus package is. On the one hand, the stimulus packages provided more resources to individuals, might have been helped them start up businesses. On the other hand, there's actually one key component that actually probably was a damper. The payroll protection program uh, was designed to support existing existing businesses, not new businesses. And so it's, it's well known in terms of economic theory and actually evidence that if you, if you uh, support incumbents, that will tend to both stifle exit, but also entry. So I might say it's actually even that much more surprising that we've seen the surge that we've had. So, so why do we think we've had this surge? Well, we're, we're still trying to figure this out. This is brand new data product and very timely data. But, but I think there's increased evidence that COVID-19 
both during the pandemic and as we recover from the pandemic has changed the way that businesses uh, interact with their workers and the way businesses interact with their consumers. And so that's provided lots of opportunities for new, new businesses to form. It's also been the case that not all existing businesses have been able to pivot. Actually, the evidence is from, from other sources that small businesses in particular have been amongst the hardest hit, particularly, by the way, in, in sectors like uh, retail trade and, and, and food and accommodations. And in retail trade, the large businesses have been, have been better able to pivot to online activity and delivery activity and, and the rest. Now, of course, there's big open questions going on right now about uh, how, mo how permanent are, is this shift to online mediated transactions remote work? We, we, we really don't know the answer to that question. But what's great about the BFS is it's giving us a window into what businesses are doing, what they're thinking about, and indeed actually doing in terms of starting new businesses. So in terms of looking forward, you know, I don't, I don't have a crystal ball in terms of what's going to happen here, but I think the business formation statistics uh, offers a, a, a unique perspective on the, on the nature of the restructuring and reallocation. It's incredibly timely for this kind of data. The actual startups data and the actual exits data that we have is uh, oftentimes is quite dated, whereas this data is incredibly timely. Now, in, in, in thinking about what the implications are going to be going forward, I think a couple of things need to be taken into account. One is when you look at the business formation statistics and then look at actual startups, it actually takes some time between applying for the new employer identification number and, and starting up a business. Oftentimes that's four to eight quarters. So we're just beginning probably to see the, the impact on things like employment from this employer start from the surge last summer and, and the surge this spring, it's too early to, to tell. The second thing is even after new businesses start up, what do we know? Well, we actually know that most new employer businesses fail. Actually, many of them don't grow. But what's striking about the United States is a small fraction tend to grow very rapidly and have made enormous contributions to job creation, innovation, and productivity growth. So that's where, really where we don't have the crystal ball. We don't know who, who are going to be the, the new successful superstar businesses that are likely to emerge from uh, this surge in uh, business formation. The main point is that we, we, we've long known that startups are a critically important part of ongoing creative destruction. And so the surge in startups is going to be quite important for helping us understand the, the nature of restructuring reallocation during and, and post-pandemic. I'll stop there. <laughs>